I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk with us. Oh, no problem, man. Fun. Give me time to, uh, kinda take a breather. What can you tell us about your current project? Well, I'm currently working on The Chosen, which is basically the Breakfast Club meets uh, Friday the 13th meets Harry Potter, but without the kid wizards. That sounds like a rather eclectic group of movies you've got thrown in there. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that you want to hook people as soon as you can. And if you can get them intrigued and interested by, by the one sentence, then hopefully they'll stick around and, and give it a look when, when it's finished. I understand you've been working on this project for a while now. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I guess you must have been talking to... Uh, a couple of my assistants then. Yeah, it's... Um, 2007, I wrote the script. Um, 2008, it was copyrighted and uh, registered with Writers Guild. And I've been trying to get it going from there. I did almost have it cast completely one time, but things sort of fell through and so I've had a couple of near misses in there with, with getting it up and running, but um, you know what they say, you know, <clears throat> good things come to those who wait, I guess. So So you've been at it for five years then? Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Five years. Wow. Yeah, five years. Is that an unusually long amount of time? Uh, not for an indie movie. Um, just the very fact that it is an independent process, uh, it takes a while to get people together, it takes a while to find people that will commit and stay committed to it, which, uh, which has been a big issue. Um, now, five years, I mean, some of the big studios have projects that, that uh, linger in development hell for a lot longer than five years. So, if I get this filmed and uh, start editing before the year's over, I think I found myself lucky that it's only been five years. I notice you don't call it a film. Yeah, I, film is something you make a movie on. It's, um, it's like digital cameras. It's, I mean, I wouldn't call it a, a memory card if I was making it on a memory card, you know. It's a movie. It's it's a story that unfolds before your eyes, and uh, you don't need film to do that. You need video, you can be digital, download, whatever. So no film then? Why? Well, uh, there's a few good reasons. One, um, it's closest to my heart, is I don't have the equipment and I can't afford the film anyways, and uh, so that's the biggest consideration. I have to use what I have. Second, if I shot it completely on film, I would have to go through and have it processed digitally so I could use it in my uh, editing and um, special effects software. And then from there to film. So, I mean, it's, it's an extra cost, an extra expense, extra time used. Um, so, saves a step there. And third, and this this one probably sounds the best, um, doing it this way digital with the you know the equipment I've got right now, it's uh, it's more eco friendly. There's a lot of harsh chemicals involved in film processing and, and creating film and even developing it and whatnot that um, it sounds really good if you can say that, hey, you know, I'm doing this for an eco reason. Um, which I am, so there you go. I see. So, in addition to having written the script and directing it, you're also acting in it. That's correct, yes. In fact, I'm in costume right now. I just got done filming the scene, so, um, yeah. So, is this some sort of ego project, then? No, no, it's not an ego thing. It's a uh, availability thing. When I wrote the script, I... 
I kept a couple of things in mind right off. One was the fact that um, I didn't want to limit myself so that it came off like it was an indie movie where you've only got like two or three people, just mostly the head shots and, and one location. That screams out indie, which is fine. There's There's been a lot of, I mean, there's a lot you can do with that. And if you've got the knack for the right storytelling, um, hey, you know, nothing wrong with it. For me, the story I wanted to tell, though, did involve more people, so I knew going into it there was going to be about a dozen people I needed. And um, especially for this type of story where you're going to kill off so many, you have to kind of have the right ratio. And knowing that there's going to be a certain number of chosen ones to live at the end of the movie, I needed to make sure I had enough of a body count up there. So that was a deciding factor. And um, so I already had that. I already knew I was going to kind of be fighting an uphill battle, getting enough people to show up for it. The last thing I wanted to do was have uh, the main characters also people that I was going to have trouble having access to. And ultimately I have more access to myself and uh, my brothers than I do anyone else. So that, that was a deciding factor. So if you can, who are the chosen? I can't really tell you without giving away too much, because um, that's sort of part of the story is Jane is going through and weeding out everyone. Ultimately, the chosen ones are the ones left. Um, I can tell you about half of them, though, Detroit and Missy. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So, tell me about Detroit and Missy. Uh, Detroit and Missy are both already involved in the supernatural world in this this sort of occult uh, subculture um, maybe a different ends of it but they're both familiar with that they're both involved and uh, so that's where they're coming from um, Detroit is the character I'm portraying and uh, he's a modern-day mage or wizard He's a self-taught kind of guy. I mean, it's not like you can go and grab your nearest yellow pages and look up School of Magic and expect to be taught sorcery. You know, there, last time I checked, Hogwarts wasn't listed in the phone book. So, um, he's kind of pieced together his knowledge. And as things unfold in that, and as, as the story unfolds, and He's, you know, he starts to learn more, pick up more things here and there. So he's sort of an anti-hero then? Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, I think he's really just a guy that's trying to do the best he can with what he's got. And, and you know, based on the situation he's thrown into. Can you tell us what that situation is? Yeah, basically, uh, Detroit is thrown into the path of uh, Janus, an ancient evil wizard who uh, who plans on trying to find and destroy this generation's chosen ones before they have an opportunity to grow into their power and, and become a true threat to them. And, and how does, does Missy figure into all of this? Missy is a seer, which is a modern day oracle and in fact she's probably actually the only character in the movie to know the entire story she just hasn't grown enough in her power yet to be able to access that knowledge yet so their powers have the potential to grow and expand then yeah yeah the way I see it um, it's implied in, in right right from the start that Detroit and Missy already have a portion, a small percentage of their, their power. You know, they, they're already immersed in this occult world. Um, the other ones, the other two chosen ones, will just get their powers toward the end of the movie. So, yes, yeah, so they will continue to grow in, and, um, which is Janus's point. He wants to stop that from happening and inadvertently maybe fast tracks it. Sounds like a sequel's implied.
Yeah, actually, I see this as a uh, the pilot episode of an ongoing series. Um, in which case, in fact, I do actually have sort of a series Bible that has uh, per season what I'd like to see happen, new characters introduced, new situations. So yeah, this this is something I see going a lot farther than just a movie or or a uh, couple of movies. Now that's thinking ahead, mate. So, you get the movie finished. Can you tell me about distribution? Uh, yeah, actually that's, that's a pretty good question because up until this point, everything's just about getting the movie made. And um, so looking past that, you know, when I put the final edit down and, and we lay down the, the, the uh, music score and, and the last credit is put on and everything's finished, it's good to go. Um, the idea is to uh, kind of chunk it up into smaller sections and put it on uh, the internet, like YouTube or whatever, maybe in like 10 or 15 minute little episodes. And um, I'm going to hold something back. I'm going to hold a little bit back so that you don't get to see everything for free. Um, you're going to get to see most of it. Oh, I see. You, you hook them with the free stuff then first, and then... And then maybe that way you'll be interested enough to buy the DVD. So believe me, there's been a few movies I've seen that I really wish I could have gotten a refund on the tickets or, you know, gotten the time back that I wasted on it. So I think it'd be kind of nice. Oh yes, there's been a number of movies I wish I could go back in time and forget that I ever saw. Or at least prevent myself from watching, I should say. Um, well thank you again for taking the time to talk with us. Oh, no problem. It was fun. I have to do it again sometime.